that the Father of Jesus is walking the earth today. Jesus said, no one comes to me except the Father draws him to myself. And the Father has also repeated the same statement that no one comes here, even with a thousand bulls attached to his waist, except I come. It's the grace of God. Nothing much we can do but to pray and to make, you know, when your heart becomes pure, when you are not complicated, when there is love welling in your heart, you will naturally be drawn to divinity. Right? But when you are here, you know, the, the most, the, the people who don't see are not those who don't have eyes. No, it is those who have refused to see. <laughs> so talk for a minute, if you will, to those newcomers who are Christians. They might be Catholics, they may be Baptists, or they may be Presbyterians. Talk to those newcomers who have somehow heard the name of Sai Baba, or they've seen his picture, and they're hungry for more, but they don't want to lose their Christianity. Ted, the most important thing is love. If you love Jesus, you will come to the Father of Jesus. You're not going to give up Jesus by coming to Baba. How? The Father and I are one. <laughs> what is the contradiction? There are no two. It is only when there is two that there is contradiction. He loved Jesus sincerely. Then he will reveal everything. He said, everything I learned from the Father, I have made known to you. Right? Love is the ingredient, is the most essential particle in our spiritual part. Right? So if they are newcomers, the only thing I tell them is love. Open up your heart. Go with your heart. Don't go with dogmas and uh, you know, uh, theology and books and books. And they are going to confuse you. Because no matter how you try, well, by seeing the form of Swami, how will you tell it's God? <laughs> it's not possible. Only God can see God. Even some of us here, we just believe it. <laughs> so something that will happen is, ah, he's not God again. <laughs> So the answer of yes is that it becomes the question of today. That's why you see bombs. Stephen are bumping. Mm -hmm. You know, something happens, something mind-boggling happens. Oh, he's God. But he's a thing of the mind. Something else happens. Oh, how can God do that? Huh? <laughs> right. But if you experience the heart-to-heart -heart connection, if you experience God, then do you know that God is beyond good and evil? God is beyond anything you can say that God is. There's no doubt. There's only mystery, love, joy, bliss. So should people who want to follow your advice and draw closer to God through Jesus, through the Father of Jesus, should they immediately drop everything and get on an airplane and fly to India? Oh, is that necessary? When God calls you, you know, you, know, you say should they. It is only when God calls you. But you're here. It is he who called me. I tell you the story. Okay, last time I came, I had problems coming here with, you know, because of the visa. And when we came in June, actually, I told Swami, Swami, it's going to be a long time before I come again. <laughs> in fact, I told him, Swami, I think I have, because I've been coming almost every year, sometimes twice, I think I have to now do some work in my whole place. And you know what? I was given express visa. He gave me express visa without fee. <laughs> the, the deputy high commissioner of India called me. Wow. And he made it very easy for you to come. He made me very easy, everything. So he brought me here. He brought you here. He brought all of us here. It is his will that brought, brings us to him, not our will. But it's not always important for people to come here and still be a good follower of Jesus and Sai Baba and, and God. Immediately you come to the Father, the reality of the Son will be made known to you. Because Jesus also said to his disciples why, before he, before or um, towards the end of his life, he told his disciples, I have so many things to tell you, but you can't bear them all now. The spirit of truth is going to come. And when he comes, he's going to lead you to the complete truth. Spirit of truth again. Who is that spirit of truth? Satya. Sad. He's gone. What's this world going to look like in 11 or 12 years 
when as if he if what he says is true if what his, you? his Sai Baba his oh, form don't goes away that. don't say that <laughs> he says it he says he's going to live till 96 okay so beyond 96 what will people do one thing I must tell you first is you can never understand what God says <laughs> What if he lives today? Then you say, ah, he said he's going to live in 96. The mind again. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of things Swami does to prevent us from a stereotype. You know, this mind wants, you know, a way of thinking. Hmm? So, but the most important thing is that his mission cannot fail. He's already there. The love that he is igniting in our hearts is mightier than the atomic force, than the force that keeps the galaxies revolving around the universe. When that love begins to expand, that is the golden age. That's the good, the age of love. Where brother does not need to say to brother, love for your brother. <laughs> because love is a natural, you become a natural connection. Mm -hmm. Is dear already. I saw you celebrate the Catholic Mass in Prashantinilium at Christmas time three years ago. You seem to reach an altered state. You seem to go beyond your body. You seemed to be in bliss. You're going to be celebrating Mass here again in Sai Baba's ashram. Tell us about that experience. Is the union of the Father and the Son. Jesus instituted the Blessed Sacrament. He took bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take it, this is my body. He took wine and give thanks and gave it to them and said drink this is my blood Swami has brought out the real essence of the, the actions of Jesus he said when Jesus took the bread and said this is my body it means that everything that has body remember the ant has body eh? <laughs> everything that has body and everything that has a life spring, spring is the life of Jesus. It's a oneness with the whole universe. So when you eat Jesus, you are Jesus. You are what you receive. You receive what you are. It is to be one, not just with your brothers and your sisters and your kid and kin or those in your religion, but one with the whole humanity, one with the whole creation, one with everything. You know what that means? No. <laughs> you can only experience it. You can know it. All I know is that you uh, said something that was beautiful, yet very surprising. But now I understand it more because you say Jesus is the Son of God and the Father of Jesus is Sai Baba. It's easier for me then to understand why you use these words in celebrating the Mass inside Prashantinelian when you say, Our Father, which art in parti. I, have, I don't think I ever expected to hear those words uttered. And when you said those for the first time, did it hit you? Did you understand deeply what you were saying? It comes. It just comes. I don't think about what I say. Because it comes from the heart. Whenever I think about it, it's not coming from him. <laughs> <laughs> and how happy do you believe Sai Baba is? that you're able to do your Christian puja here in the land of India. He's the one that says do. <laughs> you know, you just be. Your duty is to be. Not to be this or to be that. 
And you're right, he is the one who said do, because he gave you permission every year to celebrate the Mass in his house. He is a celebrant. <laughs> <laughs> he is the bread. He is everything. Right? You see, this is spirituality. You're asking me how to drop the mind. But I tell you, the root of the mind is the ego, the I. As long as there is this I recording in your life, you cannot experience God. Jesus said you cannot serve both mammon and God at the same time. Mammon is the world, the world is the mind. So, when the I begins to diminish, it is no longer I who lives, but Christ dwelling within me. St. Paul says, when the I, this I, you know who I am? I did this, I did that, I did this, I'm going to do the other one. When the I begins to diminish, and then in your life is God, 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 God. Then you are not far from the kingdom of God. And even when you're sick, you can feel this way? Sick, who is sick? Even when you're... The Atma, you can never be sick. Even when you're in fear of something, you can you be this way? You can never... When there, is a, when there is fear, it's the mind. When there is sickness... Swami also said that 99%, I will also really you know, 99% of what we suffer is as a result of the mind. This bodily sickness. Because the body is a reflection of the mind. So in, the Atma is not... You get hot. Why do you get hot? Is the, is the, the suffer is at fault. Whenever you suffer, you are at fault because the ego is producing itself. It's the ego that suffers. I get hot all the time. <laughs> yeah, a little example. Have you ever had a toothache? Yes. Oh. <laughs> How was that? It hurt. It hurts. Bad one. Huh? You can't eat, isn't it? Yes. All your mind will be in your mouth, isn't it? <laughs> Now you never know that there's a set of teeth in your mouth, isn't it? Now, this toothache you had, what is the cause of the pain? The body is the eye. Because you focus your concentration on it? It's the eye. When the eye is there, there's pain. When the eye is not there, there's no pain. All of a sudden you take tablets. Even the toothache won't also allow you to sleep. Then you take sleeping tablets. To door yourself into sleep, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you are off. What happens? You forget yourself. Immediately you, there's no eye in deep sleep. The pain goes. So you're saying when somebody experiences physical pain, the cure is to forget themselves? No. You can't just do it like that when the pain comes. <laughs> it's a part of spirituality. Gradual part. But you need forget self. Self, I mean, is the little self, the ego, which is the reflection of the big self. You call it self because it's a reflection. It looks like the original. That's why you call it self. When you see your image, you say, that is myself. It's the image. But it, because it's like the image, it, is, it has the same name with self. I am. When Moses asked God, who are you? God said, I am. My name is I am. Okay? The same I am, I, is the same ego, I. Okay, but that ego, little self that is individuated in the body, that identifies itself with a particular body, is the little self. When this individualization is caught, and then you merge with the universal self, that is God consciousness. Do you understand? Yes. So the root of pain, suffering, sorrow, anxiety, is the mind. And another big one for many people is anger. What, what is the cause of your anger? Why are you angry? I guess people might say it's because they feel they're not being treated fairly. Who are they? When you are everything. Yeah. <laughs> it's the sense of separation. Right? You say, okay, your wife, you go and take his money. You don't feel your money is lost, isn't it so? Huh? Okay, another person goes and takes it. So he has stolen the money, right? <laughs> because you feel one with Judy, but you don't feel one with the other person. <laughs> Very right? good. So it is this sense of separation that brings all the trouble. And what is the cause of that sense of separation? Is the I. I am American. I am African. I am tall. I am rich. You are poor. Is the I that separates you from yourself.